Welcome to the Madison Miller Podcast. Today is Thursday, March 31st, 2021. Today I'm going to recap the NBA, NHL, and Major League Baseball spring training games from yesterday. Look ahead to today's games in each sport. I'll do my picks for the TBC and the NIT championship games. Major League Baseball right field rankings. Mass Singer from last night. News and notes and best bet. We're going to start with the NBA. We're going to recap the games from yesterday. It was a big window. And look ahead to a smaller window for tonight. Mavericks over the Cavaliers, 120-112. to 112. Nuggets over the Pacers, 125-118. Wizards over the Magic, 127-110. Heat over the Celtics, 106-98. Hornets over the Knicks, 125-114. Raptors over the Timberwolves, 125-102. Kings over the Rockets, 121-118. Hawks over the Thunder, 136-118. Grizzlies over the Spurs, 112-111. As the Spurs, um, Keldon Johnson misses a game-winning layup against the Grizzlies to put the Lakers back into the uh, playing tournament. Suns over the Warriors, 107-103. And the Pelicans over the Trailblazers, 117-107. Five games tonight. First up is the 76ers and the Pistons at 7 o'clock. My projection is Philly by 10 half, total 223 and a half. And we got here 10 and 223 and a half. I had a gut feeling that this was going to be Dead on the money or close to it. So I guess it's a slight lean to the Sixers. 730 TNT Bucks Nats. Big game. My projection is Brooklyn as a seven. I'm sorry. Three quarters underdog. Total 227 and 65 hundredths. And it's Brooklyn one half. Total 240 and a half. I like the under. Um. I actually think there's going to be defense played in this game. Um, Cavs Hawks makeup game from December nineteenth. My projections: Hawks six and a half total, two twenty eight and thirteen twentieths, and it's five and a half and two twenty four. Over. Eight o'clock Clippers Bulls projection: Bulls by two total, two seventeen and three twentieths, and it's three and a half and two twenty two and a half. I'm going to take the under. Last but not least, 10 o'clock TNT. You have the Lakers and the Jazz. I think Clippers Bulls belongs on TNT because the Lakers have no business being on national TV with LeBron out. Uh, my projection is Utah by 16 and a quarter till 227 and four fifths. And it's 13 and 227. I'm going to lay to 13 with the, with the Jazz here against the Lakers. Now I'm going to do NHL. I'll recap the games from yesterday and look ahead to what I think is a busier slate for tonight. Jets over to Sabres 3-2 in a shootout. Rangers over to Red Wings 5-4 in overtime on a game winner by Andrew Kopp. Oilers over to Kings 4-3 in a shootout. Blues over to Canucks 4-3. Coyotes over to Sharks 5-2. And the Golden Knights over to Kraken 3-zip. Now we look ahead to tonight's games. It's a big window. Nine games. 7 o'clock, you have the Devils and the Bruins from Boston. Bruins minus 280. Devils plus 225. Over under 6.5. Minus 10 each way. Devils plus 1.5 is minus 111. Bruins minus 1.5 is plus or minus 108. I'm going to take the over in this game. I think that the Devils... Could go on an offensive surge against the right opponent. And I don't trust the Bruins goaltending. Jets made beliefs. Toronto minus 235. Winnipeg plus 190. Over under 6.5. Overs minus 115. Unders minus 105. Winnipeg plus 1.5 is minus 122. Toronto minus 1.5 is plus 102. Winnipeg has found themselves back into the playoff picture. As they're two back of Vegas for the last wild card spot. Which is pretty amazing. I'm going to actually take them to win outright plus 190. I like how they're playing. 
Blackhawks, Panthers, um, the Quinville Bowl. Except he doesn't coach either team anymore. Panthers minus 360, Chicago plus 280, over under 7, over even money, under is minus 122. Chicago plus 2.5 is minus 144, Florida minus 2.5 is plus 120. I do like the over at even money. Um, Worst case scenario, this is going to be a push. Blue Jackets, Islanders. Isles minus 194, Columbus plus 160, over under 6.5, over is even money, under is minus 122, Columbus plus 1.5 is minus 154. Islanders minus 1.5 is plus 128. I'm going to go Columbus as a link, a big dog. The Islanders shouldn't be that big of a favorite. Canadians, Hurricanes. Carolina minus 400, Montreal plus 310, over under 6.5, over is even money, under is minus 122. Montreal plus 2.5 is minus 152. Carolina minus 2.5 is plus 126. I'm going to take the over and even money. Um... I just think Carolina's a machine offensively. I think this is a 5-2 game. 8 o'clock, Penguins. Wow, this is a big one. Minnesota, minus 122. Pittsburgh, plus 102. Over, under 6.5. Over is plus 104. Under is minus 128. Pittsburgh, plus 1.5 is minus 250. Wild, minus 1.5 is plus 198. So Pittsburgh now is 6 back of the Hurricanes and 3 back of the Rangers. How about the Rangers sneaking up a little bit? Could potentially win that division. Um, Pittsburgh, too, for that matter. Um, even though they lost those two games to the Rangers, that's the difference right now. Um, but still pretty close. Um, I actually think Pittsburgh might win this game. They're better than the Wild. Um, Mark Andre Fleury against his former team, I think, will play well. But I'm going to take Pittsburgh. Plus 102. Pittsburgh in the under would be a good same game. 9 o'clock, Sharks Avalanche. Avs minus 360, Sharks plus 280, over under 6.5, over is minus 115, under is minus 105. Sharks plus 1.5 is plus 110, Colorado minus 1.5 is minus 132. I'm going to go with the over, um, Colorado's an over machine. Kings Flames. Flames minus 295, Kings plus 235, over under 6.5, over is minus 114, under is minus 106. Kings plus 1.5 is even money, Calgary minus 1.5 is minus 120. Um, Calgary's just running away at the Pacific. The Kings are 6 back. The Kings, um, I think, are being disrespected in the market. I'm going to take them plus 1.5 at even money on the puck line. And last but not least, Stars, Ducks, big game for Dallas, who is a minus 170 favorite on the road. And I'm plus 140, over under 5.5, over is minus 114, under is minus 106. Stars minus 1.5 is plus 162, Ducks plus 1.5 is minus 196. Um, I really think that Dallas will probably win this game to leapfrog Vegas back into that wild card spot. So I'm going to go with Dallas in regulation. At minus 105 as my pick for this game. All right, Major League Baseball Spring Training. We will recap the games from yesterday and look ahead to today's slate of games. Orioles over to Rays 7 to 6. Red Sox over to Braves 10 to 7. Twins over to Pirates 9 to 4. Tigers over to Phillies 7 to 1. Cardinals over to Nationals 29 to 8. Yikes. Cubs over to Mariners, 8-5. White Sox over to Rangers, 7-0. Giants over to Royals, 9-5. A's over to Reds, 5-4. D-backs over to Rockies, 9-2. Padres over to Brewers, 4-2. Astros over to Mets, 5-3 in 10 innings. Blue Jays over to Yankees, 11-3. The Dodgers over to Guardians, 12-1. Today, 1 o'clock, Rays, Braves, Twins, Red Sox, Yankees, Phillies, Orioles, Blue Jays, or Orioles, Pirates, Tigers, Blue Jays. 4 o'clock, Royals, A's, Rockies, Giants, Dodgers, Rangers, Padres, D-backs, Angels, Brewers, Nats, Mets at 6, 6.30, Cardinals, Marlins, 9 o'clock, White Sox, Reds, and the Guardians, and the Mariners at 9.40. All right, tonight is the TBC Championship game. This is a new tournament that replaced the CIT, so that's why I kept calling it the CIT on the podcast um, throughout the week. But tonight's the championship match. You have Fresno State 
and Coastal Carolina. My projection for this game is... Coastal by Fresno by a half total, 129 and four fifths. And we got here Fresno by three total, 126 and a half. I'm going to think, I'm going to say Coastal Carolina wins the game actually, but the pick, I'm going to go over. For the podcast over 126 and a half. I really like that a lot. I think there's going to be more points than that scored in this matchup. And Coastal Carolina will be your 2022 the Basketball Classic Tournament champions. All right, now I'll move on to the NIT. Um, we have that championship tonight as well from the Garden. Xavier and Texas A&M. I actually project Xavier as a three and a half point favorite in a total of one forty point seven. And Texas A and M's a four point favorite, total is one thirty seven half. Give me Xavier plus the four and plus one seventy two to win outright. I think they're motivated that Sean Miller's back at the program and Um I believe that uh I like Buzz Williams a lot, he's done a great job. He's probably the better coach in this particular matchup, but I just like how Xavier's playing in the NIT. So give me Xavier plus the four, a minus 105, and plus 172 to win this game outright. All right, now move on to Major League Baseball right field rankings. Um, Interesting list, to say the least. Um, Yesterday we did center fields. Friday we'll do DH. Monday will be pitchers, starting pitchers. Relievers, well, closers will be Tuesday. And then the top 100 players I'm going to reveal on the Thursday podcast. Or I'm sorry, the Wednesday podcast next week. And then the major um, predictions show I'll drop on Tuesday night and Thursday's opening day. So without further ado, my right field rankings for the season. 30, Paven Smith, Diamondbacks, 29, Ben Gamel, Pirates, 28, Darren Ruff, Giants, 27, Alex Dickerson, Braves, 26, Tyler Naquin, Reds, 25, Jackie Bradley Jr., Red Sox, 24, Robbie Grossman, Tigers, 23, Mark Hanna, Mets, 22, Cole Calhoun, Rangers, 21, Anthony Santander, Oilers, Orioles, I'm sorry, 20, Manuel Margo, Rays, 19, Hunter Renfro, Brewers, 18, Joe Adele, Angels, 17, Josh Naylor, Guardians, 16, Will Myers, Padres. 15, Andrew Vaughn, White Sox. 14, Ramon Laureano, Athletics. 13, Avisael Garcia, Marlins. 12, Saya Suzuki, Cubs. 11, Max Kepler, Twins. 10, Dylan Carlson, Cardinals. 9, Teoscar Hernandez, Blue Jays. 8, Charlie Blackman, Rockies. 7, Mitch Maniger, Hanniger, Mar- Mariners. 6, Whit Merrifield, Royals. 5, Kyle Tucker, Astros. 4, Bryce Harper, Phillies, three, Aaron Judge, Yankees, two, Mookie Betts, Dodgers, and number one, Juan Soto, Washington Nationals. Um, to me, without a doubt, it's Juan Soto. He's a top five player in all of baseball. He's so good. And I believe that um he's gonna have a big year. But his future in D.C. is going to be a big topic and whether they should trade him or not because they have, like, nothing in the farm because they traded all their um, people away when they won the World Series. But they did end up giving a nice haul back for um, the Scherzer-Turner combo. So I guess it's not fair to say that they have nothing in their system. I do like Kiebert Ruiz a lot. I think he'll be a good pro. I think Mookie Betts will have a bounce back season for the Dodgers this year. After being a little bit of a disappointment last year for me. Aaron Judge versus Bryce Harper is a very interesting conundrum here. Um, I would put Judge over Harper. Both guys, what they have in common is an inability to stay healthy. But I feel like 
Bryce always puts a lot of pressure on himself, and Aaron Judge is just a better leader, and he um, helps his team win more than Bryce has since he's joined Philadelphia. I know he won the NL MVP last year, but I don't really think he deserved it. I think it should have been Freddie Freeman because, to me, if you're the MVP, you need to be on a team that's over 500 at least. That's why I don't think him and Otani deserved the MVPs last year. Um, and Kyle Tucker had a breakout year last year. He finally put it together. After a lot of people, including myself, thought that he could have been a bust. So I got to give credit where credit's due. Merrifield's a great player. He's literally the outfield version of DJ LeMayu in terms of... Um, well, he does play second base too, but... um. In terms of just flat out hit. Mitch Hanniger is a great player. He had a good year last year. I think he'll be better this year, even with the Mariners being a better team with him having more protection in the lineup. I love Charlie Blackman. So fun to watch, but he hasn't been as good. Might give him the benefit of the doubt. Teoscar Hernandez, I think, is going to be awesome this year in Toronto. And Dylan Carlson had a good year last year for St. Louis, and I think he'll be better. And then. Even guys like um, Kepler, you could argue, belong in the top 10. But he's you can make a case as the snub. And Suzuki can work his way there. I really like Suzuki. I think he's going to be great for Chicago. And get that team and that fan base excited that, for down the road. Alrighty. Now we're going to recap the Mass Singer episode from last night. Um... A very interesting show. Um, new characters have been unveiled. Um, so this is technically Group B. And whoever comes out of this group will join Firefly in the final. Um, first up went Miss Teddy. Um, there is um, a rainbow in there, which could be a nod to LGBTQ. Um, there's a Santa Claus. Maybe this is somebody that's been in a Christmas um, movie. Um, there is a garbage. There is a bed. The uh, laughing, crying emoji. And there's a cocoon that turned into a butterfly. And she sang Tell It To My Heart by Taylor Dane. Um, she was pretty solid. Um. Not elite. There was an elite performer in this group. I'll get to her in a little bit. Um. So. Um. Jenny McCarthy threw out a couple guesses. Um, Lauren Hill, Vanessa Williams, and Jill Scott. I think Jill Scott's a distinct possibility here. Robin threw out C.C. Winnest. And CC Pence as two guesses. And the cold throughout Loretta Divine, which is a nice guess. And by the way, cut uh, Miss Teddy's from T Cuddly. Next up to the stage was from Team Bad Hydra, which was a three headed dragon. There were roller coasters, there was a shark, um, Miami, a three ball. They said, ask your amigos on the ball. And there's an ATM, and they shouted out Ken Jung, and they performed Hey Soul Sister by Train. Um, I think this is, could very well be the three amigos, Steve Martin, Martin Short, and Chevy Chase. Um... They've all done a lot together. Um, obviously, the three amigos. They've all been on Saturday Night Live. Martin and Short, as in Steve Martin and Martin Short, were in Father of the Bride together. So there's that connection with for those two. And Robin and Ken both guessed them. And... Jenny McCarthy threw out a different guess. She guessed the big 
Lebowski. Um, Steve Buscemi. Um, John Goodman. And Jeff Bridges. So that would be a uh, interesting threesome too. And I thought about Steve Buscemi too, actually. But I think it's got to be the, the three amigos. I mean, come on. And from Team Good, the ringmaster. She was excellent. There's a cereal, a coffee cup. Um, there was a Miley Cyrus and then the state of Montana clue. Tic-tac-toe, which could relate to TikTok. Sweet Southern. Golden State Driver's License. And she performs The Climb by Miley Cyrus. I have a guess for this. I think this is Emily Osmond. Um, she played um, Miley Cyrus' best friend on Hannah Montana. She's from California. Um, she, um, um, her character name was, uh, Lily Truscott on Hannah Montana. So I really do think this is Emily Osmond. And also she played in, um, a movie called Cyberbully. Which was a ABC Family original um, in the beginning of last decade. And she was the uh, protagonist in that movie. So um, that's something to potentially look out for. Um, this is the one I feel the best about right now. Actually, no, I feel the best about um, Hydra. And then I'd say Ringmaster. I feel better about Hydra and uh, the Three Amigos than I do with Ringmaster. But... Um, I'm going to go with Emily Osmond. Um, Nicole said Olivia Rodrigo. That would make some sense because of uh, Golden State Driver's License. Um, Hannah Montana being like the Disney connection. Um, but I don't think it's Olivia Rodrigo. Although the clues make sense. Um, Robin said Casey Musgraves. I think that... Uh, that's okay. Ken Jung said Kelly Clarkson, but I know her voice. And this person, celebrity BFF, John Oates. So there's a connection to John Oates somewhere. And then from Team Cuddly went Lee Moore. There was a vanity, there was a guitar, there was a sun, a heart magazine, ice cream. Or no, not ice cream. There's eye cream. Um, she said something about perfect harmony. And then there's a, a rolling stone. And then she performed I Feel the Earth Move by Carol King. Um, Ken Junk threw out Heather Lockyer and Jennifer Aniston. Nicole said Goldie Hawn. And Jenny said Molly Shannon. And Melanie Griffin. And then last up was Armadillo. There were rocks. There's an umbrella. There's a beefcake. There were scrubs. Sunglasses. There's a bow and arrow. And this person performed Secret Agent Man by Johnny Rivers. Um, this is the one for me that was the toughest to figure out. But I don't have an official guess yet for Armadillo. So I'm kind of glad that he's still alive. Ken Jung said Chuck Norris. Nicole said Eric Strader. And Jenny said Vin Diesel. And who went home? Lee Moore. Uh, my first impression guess for Lee Moore was No Marnie of Fifth Harmony because there was something about harmony in the clue package. And then I heard this woman sing and she sounded older and I felt like she was an actress because... She mentioned something about acting. So I settled on Meryl Streep. Nicole said Goldie Hawn. Jenny said 
Pamela Anderson. Robin said Melanie Griffin. Ken Jung said Christy Brinkley. And who was it? Christy Binkley. Ken Jung on the board for the season. Good job for Ken Jung. Um, getting one right that wasn't an athlete. Um, so that was a pleasant surprise. Um, good for Ken. Um, Christy Binkley, good get for the best singer. She was married to Billy Joel for a decade. Um, she was the face of the cover girl. Um, she played several movies. She was in Chicago. Um, she was in NBC's Mad About You. She was in National Lampoon's Vacation as the girl in the red Ferrari opposite Chevy Chase. So that would be freaking wild if Chevy Chase um, is indeed with Steve Martin and Rob uh, Martin Short in the Hydra costume. So Brinkley, good get for the show. I think much better than last week with um the Eagles offensive tackle um who um nobody knew existed except for us sports fans. And um he's a good player. Um Malata's a really good player. He had a breakout year for the Eagles last year and I think it went unnoticed. But I don't just don't think he's famous enough to be on the mass singer. Like Carson Wentz would have been fine. We're talking about like former Eagles, but any current Eagles, maybe Jalen Hurts because he's a quarterback and he played at Alabama. You could have talked yourself in the Jalen Hurts and I. Like I said, like Ben Simmons was my guess for that because there's a Philadelphia clues and then said that he had a big change in his life recently. So um, that's what made me think of Ben Simmons for that. So yeah, Christy Brinkley was the lemur on the mask singer, and this group will be back next week as somebody will get unmasked. And I think for sure that Ringmaster's the front runner to go to the finale with Firefly. She was excellent. And I mean really excellent. All right, now we'll move on to news and notes for today. Um So Julius Randle is rumored that he's gonna request a trade this summer. And here's a report from WFAN. And Randall says, it's just not true. I mean, are we sure? We'll find out in the summer. But I do think he's going to end up getting traded because I think the Knicks realized that last year's a career year for him. Um, and him taking a major step back is the reason why they're not going to make the playoffs this year. WNBA News, um... Lexi Brown cha- traded to um, the Storm in exchange for the rights to center Lee Yeru. So that's a nice um, trade for the Sparks, getting some depth. Evan Mobley out the next three games, rehabbing the sprained ankle. So that's a big loss for Cleveland as they're trying to uh, get in the playoff position. Um, Michael Porter Jr. suffers a recovery setback as his return now is over or uncertain after overcompensation and overwork. So as excited as everybody was for Denver to potentially have their team back, um... It looks like that they might not get their team back. Robert Williams out four to six weeks as he underwent meniscus surgery and could return for the second round of the playoffs. This is a big loss for the Celtics. They're going to lose in the first round if he's not back. I'm sorry. 
Unless that they're if they're the one seed playing against the week eight seed, like the Cavaliers or something like that. But even Cleveland could beat them if they're healthy. The Celtics had a nice run. They had everybody healthy, but now they have an injury. So this is bad luck on their end, but his breakout is a big reason why they're in the top four in the East right now. Um, the biggest news from yesterday, though, um, we'll get to in a second, but um, yesterday was um, CJ McCollum's return to Portland, and they gave him a long-standing ovation, which is very deserved for him. But the biggest story from last night is that Bruce Arian retires and will be moving into a front office role, and Todd Bowles was named the head coach. This was bound to happen. For me, especially after Tom Brady was committed to coming back to the Buccaneers. There's obviously bad blood between Brady and Arians unless or and no way they're gonna confirm it. Um and Brady thanked Arians. You're a true NFL legend and a pioneer. And Todd Bowles got a five year deal. So Todd Bowles is getting his second chance as an NFL head coach after being a failure with the Jets. So we'll see how he does. I think he'll be better because he has Tom Brady. But um, without a quarterback, I don't think he's very good as a coach. Um, Lamar Jackson denies false rumors about him leaving Baltimore. Amid contract negotiations. So we'll see if that extension finally comes through fruition or not. Major League Baseball announces um, a home run derby X, creating a global tour featuring former players to make stops in London, Seoul, and Mexico City. So that's pretty neat. It would be entertaining for sure. Um, Hunter Green will be, um, making the Reds roster and to make his first Major League Baseball appearance in Atlanta on April 10th. So that's pretty cool that Hunter Green's finally getting his chance in the show. Um, Patrick Peterson back to the Vikings on a one-year deal. That's good for Minnesota. As uh, they keep an asset. Alaya Boston named Player of the Year. The Naismith, Naismith Women's Player of the Year. A double-double, 16.8 points and 12.2 boards. Well-deserved for her. As they're among the front runners to win the title. Michael Kafora resuming free agent talks after... Um, he was rehabbing his shoulder injury from January and has restarted contract discussions. We'll see where he lands. Um, despite losing 2 nothing to Costa Rica in the final qualifier, USA qualifies for the World Cup. That is big for them. They haven't made a World Cup in a while, and I think they're under a lot of pressure to at least show that they belong. Another big news in the last of the sports part of news and notes is that uh, it's official. Um, Shaheem Holloway to Seton Hall, six-year deal um, after taking St. Peter's to Elite Eight. This was bound to happen the second St. Peter's got eliminated, and you could even make the case the second that they upset Kentucky. Holloway was amazing. Um, he had the best coaching job in the MAC with the program that is small and really didn't have um, the success as, say, Iona in the MAC. But they were, like, in that second tier with, like, Mammoth in terms of the close but not there. But they finally broke through and made the Elite Eight. And um, St. Peter's was the talk of the town, and um, they're going to have a parade for them tomorrow in Jersey City, which is very nice. And now Holloway goes to his alma mater in Seton Hall and somewhere where he used to be an assistant coach under Kevin Willard. 
So, fantastic hire for Seton Hall. Um, now the question is that will they remain a uh, Big East contender going forward or will they uh, drop in a little for a little bit? Because there's a possibility of them being like next year's version of Butler where they're just down. The usually good team in the Big East is down for whatever reason. But I don't think they're going to be next year's Butler. I know there's a lot of guys that... Um, or seniors for that team and guys that they're going to have different guys coming in. So you never know. I think they're probably middle pack Big East team. But I think Holloway really is a guy that gets a lot out of teams. So great hire for Seton Hall. Non-sports news. Um, Joe Biden received his second COVID booster shot yesterday. Um, we'll see when that really kicks in and people start to get it. Um. Paul Herman of The Sopranos and Goodfellas passes away at the age of 76. Very sad news. Good actor, thoughts and prayers to his family and his co-stars in um, the two shows and elsewhere. Charles Manson family member Leslie Van Houten's peril blocked by Governor Newsom. We'll see what's more to come out of that story. Um, Brian Laundrie's family flies motion to block Gabby Petito's family lawsuit. Baseless and frivolous was the quote. There's still more to come for this uh, tragic story. Um, the Academy says that Will Smith refused to leave the Oscars and broke the conduct code. Um, Chris Rock broke his silence last night, and it was interesting what he said. And then Wanda Sykes was on Ellen and spoke about the Will Smith slap heard around the world. So I would check that out as well. So there you have it for news and notes. And last but not least, my best bet of the day brought to you by FanDuel, um, I'm going to go with the under in Brooklyn, Milwaukee. Do I feel good about it? No, but I think there's going to be actually some defense played in this game. So, despite all the talent on each side, I'm going to lay a unit on under 242. Went up to 242. I like it. 243 and a half. Oh, my God. This is getting bet up. All right. So, I'm going under 240. Oh, my God. It's at 244 now. I love it. I love it. 244. Under 244, one unit on it. Love it, love it, love it. About a 17-point differential. All right, so there you have it on the show today. I'll be back tomorrow recapping everything from today and looking ahead to tomorrow and the weekend stuff. Um, We'll obviously talk, get more into the Valero Texas Open. It actually um just started, so we didn't get into that on purpose. Obviously, we have American Idol on Sunday, so um, we will um, talk about that. As it's fan favorites from Dynamic Duos and hit the Hollywood stage for their duets challenge. And then... Um, is Idol on a Monday, too? Yes. Is that say uh they take the stage for the first time with the with a band. So two episodes of Idol coming up next week. So that should be a lot of fun. Alright, hope you guys have a great day, everyone.